I think this should work. <laughs> hey guys, hey, 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 Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Um, next time I will upload a video will be on the 1st of January in new year this is the last video for this year okay this is the last video for this year so it's gonna be a good one okay hey ladies okay perfect so you guys are coming so for the new for the new members who want to subscribe or join my name is Greta Berishide and I upload videos every, when do I do it? I do it on Wednesdays and Sundays. Usually I upload a video, a fresh new video on dating and relationships, how to be a woman of high value and bring out the best in your man. So he treats you like a queen, right? These type of videos. I upload them every Wednesday and on Sundays I do a live on a topic and then I do some Q&As at the end. Cool. Okay, so subscribe to my channel and don't forget to like it. And let me know in the comments below after I make a video so I know what you want and you know, all the rest. Okay, ladies, so today's topic is how to be extremely attractive to men. So any, any kind of suggestions or what do you girls think, what works the most? <laughs> Let me know. Hey girls, hey all, hey all. Okay, do you like any ideas? Drop it in, drop it in and I'll talk about them. Anyway, so how to be attractive to men? The most important thing is to feel attractive yourself, right? If you feel really, sorry, I have a snotty nose. <laughs> it's Christmas time, you know? Um, if you feel really attractive inside, you will be attractive to other people. Same as if you will really love and value yourself, other people will love and value you as well. And for this, I have a million of examples, so get ready for them, okay? And um, I'll share a lot of my own examples. <laughs> I just love sharing my own examples and embarrassing myself on social media. It's great, great. I live a great life. Anyway, so um, as majority of you know, maybe perhaps I'm six foot three, right? So the way I was raised, I was raised in a way that tall is very beautiful, that you're extremely lucky to be tall, poor, short people. Okay, no offense, everyone's beautiful, but this is how I was wired when I was a little girl, right? So I never had any problems or I never was conscious that I'm tall. Yes, I would be a bit insecure here and there sometimes, but I always thought that tall is very beautiful and I'm so lucky to be tall. Now, a lot of girls my height, in fact, I don't know personally a woman who was raised that tall is beautiful. Majority of women have who are tall, they have a lot of insecurities. Okay, my both parents are really tall. My mom is really tall. She was like picked out like one of the most beautiful athletes in Lithuania. No wonder <laughs> tall is so beautiful, right, in my family. But um, I mean, I was wired that way. But um, a lot of women have been raised in a way that tall, poor tall girl, you know, and they would get lots of tall kind of pick up, not pickups, but people picking on them. So this is how it is. Then... I walk into a room, into a restaurant, into a club, anywhere, right? Anywhere, no matter how I feel, I will walk in it like I own it, right? Because I know I stand out, right? I stand out, it's nearly impossible to miss me. People see me like, oh, it's Greta there, right? Just like, I'm like the tall one standing out. So I know I stand out. I know people see me. So if I will walk into the room, like trying to hide and kind of like, don't look at me and looking at the floor, like I am embarrassed, people will look at me like, oh, poor this tall girl. You know, I feel so sorry for her. It must be so hard to be tall. You know, like they will feel sorry for me. 
and at the same time, they will start to undervalue, undervalue me, right? If I will walk into a club or into a restaurant or anywhere else, pulling off my confidence, like, you know, like confidently standing tall, shoulders back, feeling good, walking in, kind of like being all confident, open, people will be like, oh, who's that tall girl? Oh, look, she's, she looks so good. She's tall, but she's charming and she looks so good, right? You see, so it's all about bad ladies. And I'm gonna tell you, and it's the same if you feel curvy, if you feel too skinny, if you don't feel the best self. For example, I remember now, this is a personal story, but I thought to share it, not to share it, but I'll share it because I think it's, it's gonna give you a lot of you confidence, right? So I remember, so the way I like to feel, I like to, I feel the best than I feel um, slim, slimish, right? This is, this is when I feel the best. Then I'm kind of more on a curvy side and my weight goes up and down, right? When I'm more on the curvy side, I will pull it off, right? Because I know I have to and it's still okay, but I don't feel the best with that, right? I feel better when I'm a bit more slim. Anyway, I remember uh, there was a time in my life when I was like in my heaviest. So it was super curvy, like everything about me was just curvy, right? And I didn't feel good, right? And I remember I had to go out because I was celebrating a party. It was like a celebration that I had to do. And I had to go out and I was the heaviest I ever been. And, you know, like it was hard to find the clothes that would fit. And I was like, oh my God, I'll make myself to go out just because I have to. I don't really want to. And then I went out and I went out into a club, right? And as I went into the club and I, I was walking down the stairs, already I boosted my mind up like with positivity much more than I would normally do. So when I feel, when I'm feeling good, right? I don't need much boost because I walk in and I feel good, right? When I feel a bit on a low, then I don't feel as good, you know, or I don't feel like I'm being my best self. My I look my best, right? I give myself an extra boost, right? So for example, when I was walking down those stairs, I was in my mind, you know, I was faking the confidence. I was doing everything in my power to fake that confidence, right? The funny thing is, I was faking it so well that literally the hottest guy in a club approached me and didn't leave my side through the whole night. I bet you every single girl in that club were thinking, oh my God, why am I not tall? I literally, this was like this. I could see so many jealous looks. It was insane. Like girls where I bet you they were like wishing to be tall. <laughs> you know, so my point is like, it's all about the confidence. You need to, sometimes you just need to fake it. Don't, like, if I would have walked into that club and trying to hide, you know, nobody would have approached me. It would be like, who's this girl? You know, she's tall and she's, like, so not confident, you know, and, like, nobody would be talking to me because I'm, like, closed, not open. But when you're, your head is high, you're open, you're smiling, you're ignoring things about yourself that you need to ignore, you're pulling it off, you know, it's gonna go smooth. So sometimes, guys, you just need to fake it until you make it. This is why I say, guys, don't, girls, ladies, don't wear your heart on a sleeve with all these insecurities. Don't be going to your friends or your boyfriend, oh my God, I need to lose weight here or I need to lose weight here. It's really unattractive. When you feel unattractive, fake it in a way that others think that you think you're beautiful, you think you're super attractive. But in the meantime, work on yourself to really start to feel good about yourself so you don't have to fake it anymore, 
okay? Now, ladies, as an example, let me tell you this. Imagine you have a boyfriend who has a beer belly, right? And um, he, what he does, right? He, he takes that beer belly and goes like, oh, babe, look, look at my rolls on my tummy, right? Look, look at my rolls. Oh, I need to lose my beer belly. These rolls are so ugly. How will you think? After a while, like if I had a boyfriend who had a beer belly, right? I would think to, and he would start doing that. I would think to myself, oh my God, for fuck's sake, will you start? Please start loving your beer belly because it's super unattractive, right? Like you'll be like, pull off your beer belly. If you have that beer belly, walk confident with that beer belly like it's the most attractive thing on earth <laughs> because this will make you look hot. You going like, I need to lose weight, look at this, that makes, yeah, I, that's not attractive. That's, you just, you know, that's not an attractive boyfriend with this mindset, right? So the same goes for you ladies, you know, like don't be, feel good inside of yourself. And then you work on feeling good inside of yourself, you become super, super, extremely attractive. It's true, right? I love honesty. <laughs> um, yeah. So that is what I wanted to say. <laughs> That's your number one thing. And you know, um, ladies, another thing, I was watching a YouTube channel recently. I'm not going to say who it is and who I watched. Um, you're probably watching this anyway. Anyway, this girl, and I agree with her, by the way, this girl, and if you recognize, you know, whichever, but I do agree with her, but... This girl was coaching ladies how to attract guys and she was saying that um, when you are a bit more like ladylike and you don't laugh too much or you're a bit more settled, um, more men will approach you. And it is true when you, obviously, when you don't, uh, you know, like if you're with your friends, don't look like you're looking for attention. Be settled, right? Like be like, let guys approach you, be settled. However, and I agree with that, more guys will approach you if you're more settled and you're not looking for attention, never look for attention. However, I just want to add one thing, like I agree with this, I would recommend this myself. Um, however, I just want to add something, you know, if you want to attract more men, yes, don't, you know, don't, like, if your goal is to have more guys coming after you, don't be in their face, don't be too aggressive, don't laugh too hard, don't look like you're looking for attention, right? However, if you want to attract your match, you do need to be yourself. You know, don't be scared to be yourself. You know, like do the high value things that I'm coaching you to do. But if you really want to attract that soulmate, right, you need to be yourself. Because if you're just being in a way, if you're just being feminine and, you know, you're being this general girl that, let's say, a lot of guys approach, you will kind of have to fake it through your whole life and stay this general girl that a lot of guys approach. That's quite a hard job, okay? And that way you will actually never meet your match, the one that you really connect with, right? So I would say like, do the high value stuff, don't be into anyone's face, but be yourself, let you shine. So then the guy who actually is looking for somebody like that can find you and you can connect. You know, yes, as when you're general, you'll attract more, but when you're yourself, this is when you attract the one. Okay, like for me, for example, I am quite sharp and sarcastic and I do test guys with that, right? I, I test because I know that it's not up to every guy's taste. I really know that and I'm not looking for any guy, 
right? Or every guy. I look for somebody who is a match, right? Who I can connect, who gets my sarcasm or who gets a bit of sharpness and can handle it with like a comeback back, right? So, you know, like otherwise, what's the point? You know, so this is what I'm saying. Be yourself and believe that you're beautiful. But in order to believe that you're beautiful, do you work on yourself? Do you work on your insecurities? However, while you're working on it, instead of wearing them on your sleeve, um, fake it. Fake it. Don't be the one in the gym screaming out loud saying like, you know, I have a fat bum, I'm working on it, or I like blah, blah. No, that's unattractive. Like, stop it. Keep it to yourself. You know, like if anyone's aware, my fat bum is like the best thing on earth and you and you should be jealous of it. And you work like, you know, <laughs> you curve it out and you work like you own it, right? And until it's like, until it's how you like it and you don't need to, you know, fake it anymore. Okay, ladies, let me do your questions. <laughs> right. Oh my God, I had a migraine all day long and it's gone. I'm so happy that it's gone. Um, okay, somebody say something and I will read your comments and I'll, I will answer your questions. Anything, a dot, a smile, a kiss, <laughs> a, blow me a kiss. Okay, cool. A friendly one, <laughs> not, you know. There was a guy running after me through the whole gym and after I bagged about myself being fat, he never approached me again. Here you go. Here you go. I love this. Thank you so much. I mean, I don't love this, you know, I feel, you know, it's not a good thing, but I mean, I love it in a way that thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, I don't, don't <laughs> that sounded so wrong. I love it. <laughs> um, I have been told by many men that we thought I like them, whereas I was only being polite. Shall I ignore such comments or not be so affectionate, which is a part of my nature? Don't be affectionate. Um, I understand, like, it depends. It really depends. I think with opposite sex, sometimes you need to hold yourself down. You know, like, um, like for example, I'm very confident. You know, I could, if I wanted to, I could be chatting up guys like that. Like, literally, very easy. I'm not shy. I'm super confident. I, however, would never do that, right? Because that's not a feminine thing to do. And I just would not do it, right? It's, I would not do it. But if I have to approach someone, it's, it's easy for me. It's like guys who say we can't approach women, I don't get it. Could be approaching guys like this, whatever. It doesn't make, you know, but I don't do that because it's, it's, it's masculine thing to do. It's not my job to approach them. You approach me, you charm me. So... With men, I do hold down a bit, you know, like I don't show them that I'm too happy around them or, you know, like you kind of like a mirror the energy, a mirror the energy. If I see a guy is full of energy and he's charming and he talks a lot, then I can be myself and I can be more confident and kind of show it and enjoy the company. If I see a guy is a bit more on a shy side and he's not, you know, not kind of full on approaching you or not holding that conversation, I'm not going to be super friendly because if I'm super friendly, I'm actually, I will come across like I'm approaching him and overpowering him, like I am too interested. So what I do, I usually mirror the behavior. It's, it works. So that way you you don't dig yourself a hole or he doesn't think, oh, wow, she's so into me. You know, it's, it's just how it is. <laughs> As a woman, you should really hold yourself down a little bit. Um, not with, like, with the right guy, when the guy is right, or when you get to know the person more, this is when you can be more yourself. Or when he meets your friends and then he sees that, oh, it's not you 
approaching him is just your personality is like that and he's aware of that that's cool you know you can be like that but if he just met you and you're all bubbly and this and that he'll be like oh my god like is, is she like hitting on me you know so just take it slow in the beginning until later on he can see that it's actually not you hitting on him but it's this is who um you truly are how do you bring up fian finances? I thought you said fiances. <laughs> finances in a high value way. It's not a fun topic, but we need to budget. Um, it would be better if he would bring it up. It would be better if he would bring it up. This type of question, it's better. Um, it's better when it's analyzed. You know, like, ladies, some questions, it's better than you tell me your whole story, you tell me how he is, and, you know, you kind of need to analyze, you need to know the details of the situation to actually give that direct, not direct, but, like, a smooth answer. Um, technically, a guy should be bringing it up, but there are ways around it, and for this type of question, it's just better to know the whole story and how both of people are so you know i can give you an insightful answer because if i'll tell you he who needs to do it and then you guys are stuck obviously that's not very helpful um my boyfriend is complaining i'm not posting about him anymore how to handle the current situation guys when guys complain that's fine when guys complain that's good it means we care. <laughs> then guys complain. Literally, guys don't listen. When man complain, it means we care. Okay? It's good. If he complains, if he nags, like you don't text me enough, you don't call me enough, you don't post pictures of us on Facebook, it's good. <laughs> it's good. It means he cares. Okay? If he actually... If he wants a picture together on Facebook, right? He can say, babe, can you post, post a picture together on Facebook? Then you post a picture together on Facebook, right? It's amazing. It's great. It's not like you're posting him and showing him off to the whole world. Oh, look, I have a boyfriend. Look how much he loves me, right? Instead, guys, am I back? Somebody just called me. This is so horrible. I hope the life didn't stop. If you're gonna call me again, <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna be happy. Okay, good. Phew. I hope the life didn't um didn't froze. Um okay, anyway, so it's good. Let him this is the best way, ladies. Like let him tell you to post a picture together on Facebook. This is the best way. Okay, don't be posting and showing him off to the whole world. Oh my God, I have a boyfriend. He loves me so much. Tagging him in. It gives a guy too much safety. It shows that you care too much. You're kind of getting obsessive over him. You're, you're not, you will stop fulfilling his love needs when you do that, right? Because a guy's love need is uncertainty. Guys' love needs are you being a challenge, all right, so you posting pics on Facebook by yourself and tagging him in, that is the opposite of a challenge. That's a turn off. Hey, Greta, my friend. Hold on, ladies. I just remembered another thing. One lady, I was talking to a lady yesterday and she said to me, uh, okay, yeah, this is what I wanted to talk about. So, I was talking to a lady yesterday and she had a bit of a toxic upbringing, right? And she feels really low because of her toxic upbringing. She feels like she's unworthy. However, she left that toxic upbringing. She went through a lot of bad things in life. She left it. And now she's achieving her goals and ambitions, right? She's, she's doing really well. However, 
what is this? Oh my God, please just go up. Okay, cool. However, she was saying to me, but Greta, how can I prove to him my value and worth? You know, she said like, how can I prove to him my value and worth? And I came from such like tox toxic upbringing, right? How can I do it? And what I said to her was like, you don't have to prove to him your value or worth in order for him to like you. You need to love and value yourself in order for you to like you. When you will like you, this is when he will like you as well. And guys, it's it's all perspective. Like if you came, like people I people I admire the most are people who had a lot of hard, who went through a lot of hard things in their life, right? They went through many hard things in their life and they still achieved their goals and ambitions. These type of people, to me, in my opinion, they have the most value because we had a lot of discipline, we had a lot of courage, we faced their fears, we changed themselves, you know, and we achieved incredible things in life, even though if we came from like a toxic upbringing or having nothing or failing and so on. So these type of people, to me, in my opinion, we have the most value and worth, right? For example, Oprah, right? Who, who thinks Oprah doesn't have any value? How much value does opera has? It's insane, right? Tony Robbins, who thinks Tony Robbins doesn't have any value? He has an incredible amount of value, right? Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, Grant Cardone, you know, these type of people, they have an enormous amount of value. But they know that themselves, they value themselves first. And their value shines because we proudly talk about their toxic upbringing and how we changed it and who we have become, right? We are proud. We're not ashamed. We're like, look what I was and how I changed myself and who I became. Be really proud of that. So when you're proud and, you know, like your value comes out everywhere, right? But if you had a toxic upbringing and you achieved your goals, but you are still embarrassed of your toxic upbringing and you think you are not equal to the people who didn't have toxic upbringing and who just went smooth or we came from, let's say, very good, healthy, rich backgrounds and just achieve things easily, then if you're talking to these type of people, you will talk to them like you're below them and this is how you will lose your value and worth, right? So it's all just, it's all perception, right? You guys, you really need to believe that, you, that you're worth it, you know, and you need to go for things. That makes sense. So this lady, when she said like, Greta, I can't prove him my value and worth because this is my background. I said, no, like, this is amazing. You have even more value and work, but you need to believe it yourself first. You know, so it's just like, it's like for me, people who were like born in rich family and who had everything put for them on a silver platter and achieved things in life. To me personally, that's not interesting. That's boring. <laughs> okay, to me, it's like, okay, Show me somebody who had nothing and done things with their life. This, I'm like, literally, I fall in love. My heart melts when I'm listening to these people. You know, I'm like with a whole admiration. So this is the type of people who have value and worth. But first, we need to believe in themselves. And that's attractive. So when you believe in yourself, this is when other people start finding you attractive too. Um... Uh, <laughs> did you use a glass to draw your eyebrows oh my god thank you for your comments to all the haters guys i love you so much thank you for watching my channel taking your time to watch my channel and um engaging on my youtube did, did you guys know that when haters unlike the comments 
and when they engage on my YouTube channel, my channel actually goes up and it gets more prom more promoted. So, you know, like if you can just please doing that, I would really appreciate it. Kisses. <laughs> okay. Uh, for instance, Eastern European immigrants were quite looked down on Western Europe when we when there are some girls, we are from the East, but we grow at the West, so we hide their own origin. If you are looked down by someone, right? Um, these are not the people that you need to surround yourself with. These are the people who have a mindset of like, of a P, right? So, you know, like if, like, why would you, why would you listen or surround yourself to these type of people? Guys, like there are so many people who think tall is ugly. Do I surround myself with people who think tall is ugly or, you know, poor tall girl? No, I surround myself with people who go like, wow, you're tall, that's amazing. You know, so this is what you do as well. Like surround yourself with people who provide value, who lift you up. It's same as dating a guy who, when you date a guy and instead he feels intimidated and because he feels intimidated because you're reaching his goals and he tries to put you down. Like, do you want to date this guy? No, you're going to let this guy go. You're going to date a guy who brings you up, who's like, okay, well done. You achieved your goals. Let's do it together. Let's create an empire, right? Who's not insecure. People who hate and, you know, people who who have time to hate, we, we, we don't do anything with their life. All we do is, you know, it's, hey, who has time for, for hate? As Gary Vee says, this is a very good saying by Gary Vee, I really love him. He says like, you know, I feel, he says, I feel empathy for the haters, you know, because if the haters are taking their time to write an ugly comment on somebody's channel or taking their time to hate, you know, how bad we must feel about themselves, you know, because only when you feel really bad about yourself or you're insecure or you have issues, this is when you start hating others, you know, because you, you are that person, like a person who is secure and confident and loves themselves and is kind and honest and nice, we're going to be empower, empowering others, we're going to be lifting them up. But a person who, you know, who hates the world, who hates themselves, you know, this is the person who will be putting all these comments. So you literally, if you're an empathetic person, you know, you'll be like, I feel sorry for the haters, like poor people, you know, like we, we probably never had the love, we never had the, you know. So, hi, you're amazing. Why would a man tell you you are the one for him and he loves you, but when find out he is still seeing other people, thank you. Uh, guys try and charm you, okay? Guys try and charm you. Not everything what he says, it's true. Like ladies, when I coach my clients, this is what it is, right? So they say like, oh, I have this guy, I'm dating him, blah, blah, blah. And they tell me what he said, all of that. So the, the first thing what I ask is, what are his actions? What are your actions, right? Because this is how you actually decide, is the guy into you or is it just a game? Is he just using you or bullshitting you or charming you? So the first thing is the actions. The actions will show the logic of things, will show the reality of things. Words is just, you know, words is just, it could be anything. Anyone can talk really nicely, you know? So words are nice if we match up with the actions, right? Words are nice to hear. It's nice to hear the compliments, appreciate it. It's nice, it's positive, right? If it's positive words, it's positive, but it needs to match up with the actions. So if he's saying he loves you and you're the one, he will be proving to you that he loves you and you're the one with his actions. And if he's not proving and if the action's showing a different story, well, then he doesn't love you and you're not the one. 
that's how it is. And actually, I wanted to share something else. Um, recently, you know, it's like law of attraction. When one client asks one question, specific question, then it's like another 10 clients ask exactly the same question. <laughs> it's so funny how things go. Anyway, the question that I've been um, kind of um, getting a lot in the last couple of days was a complaint saying that why guys um, that uh, for saying that he is not that open, he's quite a closed person. Um, I never get him to tell me that he loves me. He's not that sweet to me. We are in a relationship, but he's just not that sweet. He never told me that he loves me, but I think he's that type of person and so on. How do I make him to tell me that he loves me or, you know, just being sweet, kind, nice person, right? So I, I actually literally got this quite a lot in the last few days. And ladies, the answer to that is if the guy is not telling you that he loves you and he is not sweeping you off your feet, it is because he does not love you as much as you would like him to, right? This is the answer. So you cannot make a guy to say, I love you, he needs to say it from here, right? When he feels that, he will say it from here. So you cannot make him to do, do that. But when he doesn't say these words, when he's not that open, when he's not sweeping you off your feet, this is when you need to think. You need to think, why is he not saying these things? Maybe it's something that maybe he doesn't see me as the one. Maybe he doesn't see me as high value. Maybe he doesn't see me as his queen yet. This is why he's not telling me these things. So maybe I can change some things in myself and pay more attention to detail and just adjust some little things. And then his attraction towards you will increase. And then all the I love you will come out like crazy. And in a lot of cases, ladies, if you are in already like in quite a stable relationship or just got into a relationship and you feel like the guy is like, it seems okay, right? Let's say you're, it's okay, right? And it seems like you know, he's okay, he's nice, he's kind, but that I love you and kind of showing his love for you is not there. Majority of case is just because you need to adjust some little detail around, like just tiniest thing. Maybe you're over pursuing him, maybe you're over pursuing him somewhere. Maybe you're not fulfilling like a love need here or there, you know, like, so if you just adjust little things, this all can change. And all of that, I love you, sweeping you off your feet and stuff like that will just come out. So, you know, so yeah, for this, obviously, I would recommend you to join my VIP one, because then you can ask your questions and will exactly tell you what to do and and so on and how to be and where you're missing and how to fix that you know and i'll put the link for vip1 or vip2 in my um youtube video description okay and let me see okay uh he always takes me dinner door and he always pays good beautiful woman thank you so much <laughs> i'm joking um, we were, n okay, let me see, um, I'm gonna try and find, like, a question that's kind of on its own, Greta, my boyfriend broke up with me as he lost attraction after three months, we dated six months, it's been two months of no contact, he cried a lot before breaking up. I was low value. I'm working hard to be high value. Yeah, this is a common breakup. Common breakups are actually after about two months. Why are they common breakups? Because even if you have a um, strong attraction with someone, you know, if you're taking things too fast, 
if you're seeing a guy too much, if you're talking to him too much, you become boring. He finds out everything about you and then it's like in two months, you know the whole person. And it's just too fast, too boring, and then it all crashes. So ladies, you need to control the speed. You need to control the speed of a relationship, right? Guys, you know, if he finds you attractive, if he finds you interesting, he'll be like, I want to see you all day, every day. You know, he'll just be full on on you. But this is when you need to be like in control of the speed, right? And you can be if you sit in the boundaries. So, you know, like if you see him once a week or a couple times a week because you're a busy girl with goals, ambitions, and so on, you don't have time to see him every single day, all day long, talk to him all day long, you know, like which girls talk to a guy all day long? The ones who are bored, the ones who don't have a life. Don't be that girl, right? So... Uh, don't talk to him all day long. See him maybe once or twice a week and just keep going like that. Create a bit of mystery. Stay a challenge. How do you stay a challenge? Just focusing on your goals and dreams. That's more than enough being a challenge. And ladies, just to add the most important thing. This is the most important thing on earth, right? You are... Don't be a challenge just to get a guy. Don't be a challenge for a guy. Don't, don't try and take all of these tips that I'm coaching you in order to get a man. If you basically taking, if you came to my channel and you are writing all these things down, right? You're writing every single thing down, tricks, things, everything down. In order to get a guy, if it doesn't happen or if things broke apart for whichever reason, you're going to be crushed. You will be like, oh my God, I invested so much time to get him. And, you know, like I was a challenge and I was having my goals and dreams and, you know, I wasn't texting him all, the, all, uh, all day long and I had to control my emotions and I still don't have him, right? Don't, don't do it like this. Do it like for you. Do it for you. Like um, control, learn how to control your emotions for you to live a better life. Learn how to be a challenge for you. Learn how to be high value for you to achieve your goals, dreams, and ambitions and to live, again, your ultimate life, to actually be happy. Learn how to be happy for you, how to make yourself happy so you live a happy life, not because you need to do it for him because it's not up to him to make you happy. So now I'm going to pretend that I'm happy and I'm going to meet some friends to, so he knows I have a life. Don't do it for him. Do it for yourself. Make yourself happy. Be the best version of yourself. This is when you'll attract men like magnet, right? This is when everybody will want to be with you. When you are happy by yourself, your phone doesn't stop ringing because everybody wants to be with a positive, happy person everyone, right? But when you're needy, when you're controlling, when you're attention seeking, we're like, oh my God, this girl, she's too needy. She's always on her phone. She's always complaining. She's always blaming. Oh my God, right? When you need others to make you happy, nobody wants to be with you. When you make yourself happy, everybody wants to be around. But ladies, don't make yourself happy in order to get a guy. Make yourself happy in order to be happy. There are some women understand men. Right, that's true. If you love yourself, if you feel good inside, you don't drop that as hate destroys your good feelings, exactly. Woman asking other women what men want. I don't get how you don't realize how self-defeating that is. What men want. It's not self-defeating. 
what men want, it's good to know what men want. Like, we as women, we want things from men as well. Like, if I'm dating a guy, I want him to be a gentleman. I want him to have manners, you know, to know at least the manners. You know, if I'm dating a guy, I want him to know how to charm me. I want him to know many things, right? Otherwise, I wouldn't date him. So I have an image in, of a man in my mind. And if he doesn't fit that image, he, I don't date him. So men want things from women as well, right? So it's good to know what men want so you can complement each other. Because, you know, men are different from us. We are designed differently. Their brains are wired differently. We are very different. So it's good to know what the opposite sex is like. How is he wired? So you know what to give to each other in order to live in harmony. Angelic, you just tell him it will be okay. You girls are talking to each other, which is good. Hi, Greta, my boyfriend, want ladies who are talking to each other here. I have a Facebook group called Greta's High Value Women's School. Okay, um, there is many requests. So it sometimes takes a week to be accepted just to keep you, you know, to warn you. But you can post your questions in the school and you can interact with each other, giving each other answers. You know, like if, because you're following me, so all the girls who are in the school, we coach each other based on my coaching. So if you are by yourself, just on my YouTube channel, and you don't know who to talk to, you know, join the school group and you will all be interacting with each other, giving each other answers, Jay, same as you are helping each other here on, 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 on this chat. And, you know, it's it's on 24-7, <laughs> so it's all good. I showed my boyfriend a blanket I made, and he said, please don't ever make me one of those. How do I respond? <laughs> you say, oh, trust me, I will definitely never make you one. <laughs> you don't. You don't. You know, if he, like, you definitely don't. You give, like, what I would do, right? If I made something that's really precious to me, right? That's really precious to me. And he says, I never want, please never give me this, right? I would make sure that everyone has my this thing except for him. It would come to that point where he would beg me to make him that thing because everyone else has it, right? Don't give him, like, be like, I would never, don't worry, I would never give it for, to you. You know, I would never make it for you. Why would I make it for you? I'll make it for my sister. I'll make it for my mom. I'll make it for my dad. I'll make it for my friends. I'll make it for my clients. I'll put it as a freebie on YouTube, you know, and you'll be like, how come I you still didn't make it for me? Sorry, babe. You know, I just don't have the time. But suddenly, he really wants that thing that everyone has and he doesn't. Hi, Greta. My boyfriend wants that I will tell him what I'm doing in advance. Or he throws tantrum. What should I do? It's a long distance really. What you're doing in advance. What he wants to know your every single move. If he wants to know what you're doing in advance, he can ask you. If he wants to know what you're doing, he can ask you and you tell him what you're doing. If he keeps telling you to tell him his your every move, then you say like, you know, you need to trust me. If you don't trust me, why are you with me? A happy relationship is all about trust, right? So, you know, I trust you. Trust me. That's it. Perfect answer. Okay, ladies. <laughs> like it if you liked it. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, what do you think? What else? Uh, just for this video viewers, I have self-love, ultimate self-love package for sale, 70% off. Okay, it's actually not because for the video viewers, it's because it's been Christmas and now New Year is coming. So it's like celebrating season. We all need self-love. So that self-love package is 70% off. 
The link is in my YouTube video description. Click on the link and it will take you there. And what does it consist of? It consists of how to love yourself. So the way I did it in that package that you will get if you pay for it, if you get it, the way I did it, I basically shared my story of where I was, which is I had nothing, right? And how I achieved things. The things that it took me. So um, I was with nothing. I was alone as a finger in London, literally no friends, nothing. My sister dying from cancer, my first sister passing away, how I dealt with everything, how I put my business first and how I made it grow. And, you know, I'm sharing all the self-love, I'm sharing how to think positive instead of negative, even if you're um, in your rock bottom. Uh, we're talking there about law of attraction, how to achieve anything you want in life, how to be strong, confident, and love yourself so much that your cup is overflowing, how to be selfish in order to be selfless. Because only when you're selfish, First, when you put yourself first, when you put your goals first, only when you're selfish, this is when you can grow, achieve things, and then after you can give things to others because you cannot give anything if you don't have anything. So first you need to be selfish and then you can be selfless. So that package is in this YouTube video description. So ladies, happy new year. Happy, happy new year 2020. May all your dreams and wishes come true. Sending you lots, come true. Yes, come true. <laughs> sending you lots of blessings and kisses and, you know, lots of good energy and vibes. Create your vision boards. I literally have my vision board right here. For 2020, I know exactly what I want and I'm going to do everything to get it. So I wish you all success, happiness, love, abundance um, and make all your goals and dream, dreams happen. Okay, kisses. Mwah. Happy New Year.